So mapping for good. So I'm Dale. Uh, I'm Kelly Math Third. I work at the Red Cross um, for the uh, American Red Cross International Services. So um, basically anything outside of the continental United States. Um, and I think one of the greatest case studies we've had is Typhoon Haiyan recently, uh, about how we actually react. Haiyan was a really, really big storm, very scary. Uh, on the streets, 200 mile an hour winds, uh, you know, 12 meter storm surge, um, which is quite big. Um, lots and lots of damage, a million homes, half a million uh, either completely destroyed and wiped off the map, another half million uh, partially damaged to a great extent. After the big disaster happens, it's kind of crazy. Um, you feel like this for the first 72 hours. I'm doing a little bit of this today, working on the Serbian floods. Um, I heard a truism uh, a couple days ago when I was at, um, in the UK, working with some friends of ours. They said all big disasters happen on holidays or weekends, um, and it is 100% true if you just start looking back at all the big ones that have happened. Um, stuff gets really repetitive very quickly. You know, you're making maps for, for the field, you're making maps for the field. Um, but it can be a lot of fun too. Coordination during events looks like this basically these days. It's just a lot of a lot of Skype, a lot of Twitter, a lot of SMS. Um, and around how we coordinate is actually um, getting better around the tools. So we as the Red Cross, we send people from all over the world. This map shows just sort of this map date is the 19th of, of last year, so that's 10 days after the storm. There are already 75 uh, people from around the world heading to the Philippines to help out the Philippine Red Cross in their response to the typhoon. Without data, it kind of sucks. Um, we can't really do anything, so we feel like we can't do anything. PDFs are Satan. Uh, the data locked away in, in PDF is basically my killer. I spend so much time in my, uh, of, of time during disasters trying to convince people to release data as services or data as data and not data as horrible PDFs. Um, sometimes people are really awesome. Uh, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, the HIU, Mapbox, all these great people give us, give us data in real formats that we can actually use. Other times we, you know, basically steal it. Um, there's a lot of web services out there that have um, WMSs into them and other things where the data is just sort of locked away in these web maps or these web portals that people have spun up. But they're not, again, services that sort of they're exposing. They're just on their own custom web map. We spend a lot of time to sort of reverse engineer or just grab the URL links to get the data. But the language that we actually use is OpenStreetMap to coordinate. And you'll see here, this is the number of chain sets. This is just chain sets from after the typhoon. And we, the mapping can happen really quickly. This shows some data from the Ebola response in Guinea, where in 24 hours, or really less, 12 hours, they mapped a city of 50,000 people um, and we had a direct response to the uh, amount of mapping that was done there and was able to help our field teams. For the typhoon, something like 16, 1,700 people contributed, 4.8 million edits to the base map for OpenStreetMap. That really represents three to four years of one uh, really good tracer working full time. So it's a huge commitment. It really makes our life a little bit easier. Um, it's actually completely, completely amazing that we don't have to worry about this, that all of a sudden our teams get a new base map every night, every morning when they wake up. Those base maps um, can then also be used as contextual data for our cash teams that know, need to know where the banks are. Um, if they go find a bank, they send us a GPS point. We put that into o OSM. The next cash team that goes out in a couple weeks now knows where the bank is. Before and after pictures, these are all sort of standard at this point. Um, but it is amazing how quickly um, we were able to map areas. And that, again, has direct impact to the people in the field, knowing where building densities are so that we can um, sort of identify town centers. When there is, when you look at a map, a lot, of, a lot of places where these big disasters happen, there is no map. It's, you know, if you look in Google or Yandex or Bing or whatever your chosen base map is, it's completely blank maybe except for a large national highway. But we're able to go in and build up the context very, very quickly. And this is important for our teams that are there for three, four weeks, and then a new team is coming in to support them, and a new team is coming in to support them. And it's very important. Um, this is one of our, this is probably our most successful product that we made for our relief teams during the Philippines response. You'll see OSM as a base map. 
and then you'll see administrative boundary data and then there's some uh, numbers attached to these areas and those numbers represent our beneficiaries and we were able to give these uh, this map book basically to our staff they're able to circle where they're going to go in the morning where they're going to go in the afternoon this saved them a ton of time it made their work uh, a lot more efficient and we were able to sort of just use simple tools and simple workflows to get them data um, that uh, they could just use in real time again this is sort of showing the intersection between Paper maps and digital maps, here we have an Android tablet uh, with OSM and updated, again, sort of every couple of days or weekly with the base map data that we were using to get from point A to point B. And then discussing with local volunteers how we're going to get to a certain place to give out shelter distribution tents or food or NFIs, so that's like some mosquito nets and that kind of thing. Um, we really... It's hard sometimes with, there's a lot of for proprietary GIS stuff out there um, that doesn't really fit with our, the way that we like to work. Um, and it's not to knock those services or there's those websites or whatever they may be, but they just, you know, we try and have a zero cost. We don't want to go somewhere and then leave them with the bill for $10,000 in year two. Um, we don't want to go somewhere and leave them and then take the data away because they can't afford the license. It's really, really important that we are open source and open data in all the things that we do. Um, we also really want to work harder. I mean, sorry, work smarter, not harder, right? So really focus on the things that we're good at, really work with partners and other folks to get the, to get sort of the most out of everything. That's it. Thank you.